Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're joining us from today. Great to have you on this Zoom. My name is Michael Faust, for anybody I haven't met, and I'm joining you from Thailand today. Uh, before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you can keep unmuted and, unless you're asked to speak, that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, remove any distractions, babies, dogs, cats, uh, turn the TV off, whatever else you're doing. Um, the next hour or so is going to give you some great information that's really going to help you achieve success in this day's opportunity. Uh, a bit of background on myself. I've been involved in the referral home base industry now for 32 years full-time. I actually built our teams, 100,000 people plus into 150 countries uh, a couple of times. Uh, basically owned, founded, managed companies during that time, helped companies launch and consult, developed software that runs companies. It's not to brag, just to say that in 32 years or something, you actually gain experience. What I'm going to share with you today is based on things that I put into practice and I know work. So I'm going to share with you not theory, but practice. And I want to give you some really simple stuff. There's no magic tricks to this. So if I can get your undivided attention, I'm sure you turn up today to take time out of your weekend because you want to get value. I'm going to try and install as much value as I possibly can. So I'd like to start on time. I appreciate taking time out of your weekend and I look forward to the rest of the session. So let me just basically get the screen up and we'll get underway. And so I'm going to turn my video off so we can focus on the screen. Okay, so the purpose of our session today is basically, is part of a series of trainings on how to be a successful community builder. That's what it's all about. I assume you're not on this Zoom today because you're being passive, it's because you want to actively take advantage of the referral opportunity that's available through DAISY. And today is about mastering the approach. In my last training I did, which you can find in our YouTube channel, we talked about the system of success, the actual wheel of community building. And I encourage you to go back and have a watch that when you get some time. But today I want to focus specifically on the actual approach. How do you start the conversation? What are the initial what's the initial language you use and, term, and terms that make it actually engaging for somebody and somebody wants to, to know more. And it's simple. Um, this is an area that was very challenging for me uh, for most of my career. Because when I first began in the referral-based industry 32 years ago, I had a stutter. I could barely actually say my name, let alone do a presentation. That was pre-mobile phones, pre-internet pre-social media. Yeah, you couldn't hide behind a sales funnel or behind a website or a Facebook page. You, the only way that people basically built the business was they got on the phone and rang people. And for me, basically, sometimes nothing came out when I got on the phone. I couldn't get anything out of my mouth. And I think there was a stalker on the end of the phone, put the phone down, all they, only breathing was all they heard. And I have to ring back and hopefully they wouldn't hang the phone up the second time. I remember getting up in front of, of a room of people and it was, a, a, as far as a terrifying experience, most people's, you know, greatest fear is public speaking. For me, it was just speaking in public in any form. But obviously over time, I've mastered that and became a powerful communicator who's now spoken in front of 10,000 people plus in more than 30 countries, done thousands and thousands of Zooms. And again, not to brag, but simply because the amount of time you spend in any endeavor you'd expect that you would do that. So the first thing I want to say to you is words create word pictures. If you think about when anybody says anything to you, it immediately brings up an imagery in their mind based on past experience or what they've learned and, and what they've seen and heard before. So you may be saying things that you think are quite okay, but the imagery that's popping up in people's heads could be vastly different to what you actually want to communicate. So it's really important. And having spent so much of my life inside my head, not being able to verbalize things, and I had to pick up a lot of 
information by just listening carefully and reading people's body language and trust my intuition. I realized because I, I was making, I was role playing six different ways to say things in my head. And hopefully the one that I got out, I wouldn't actually stumble on. And I learned to be very concise and I realized the power of words. So I want you in today's session to pick up on that. And you'll notice if you read any of my communication, my posts or in my videos or anything that I do, I'm very specific about words because I understand that they can either be helping somebody move in the direction that you would like them to go, or you're actually making them run in the opposite direction. So it's really important to choose your words carefully. Don't be just very loose with whatever you post, whatever you say to people. Think carefully. Get out of your own head and get in the head of the person you're talking to and think, how would they interpret what I'm saying? Does it sound like a foreign language? Does it actually make sense to them? Would it be engaging or put them on the defense? So that's very important. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through that in the session today about the sort of words that you should be using that engage people and the words that you shouldn't use that would turn people off. I would also say that it's really important to get your own story right first. This is really important because I find when I ask people why they're involved in this opportunity, they actually say a lot of things that have nothing to do with why they're really involved in the opportunity. And it's really important that you understand why, because people are going to have a conversation with you and they're going to ask you what you do or what you've been doing. And most people, their heads start spinning. If you're a doctor, an engineer, a nurse or a plumber, and I ask you what you do, you'd, you'd find it very easy to tell me because people can identify clearly what those professions are. But when we get involved in this referral-based, home-based industry, blockchain, crypto, most people's heads are spinning, wondering, how do I communicate this in a way that people could understand it? Because it is foreign territory for most people. So it's really important that you get really clear in your own head about creating your story. So if somebody asks you about your family, you could tell that very clearly. If somebody asked about your actual normal business or day job, you could probably answer that very well. But if I asked you what you're doing with Daisy, what you're involved, I'm sure you'd be actually hesitating. You'd be stumbling over your words for the vast majority of people. So the first thing I would say to you, and maybe get a pen and paper if you have some handy, or you on, I'm on the recording, I'd encourage you to get and write this down and write your story down. Why did you really join Daisy? Now, some people will say, oh, because it's blockchain, because it's cryptocurrency, because it's a smart contract, because it's got a matrix pay plan, because I can become a pace setter. Really? Is that really why you got involved? I don't think it is. I think why it's, you got involved is because you saw this as a vehicle to create change in your life. It's that simple. Don't get caught up in the mechanics. I tell the story all the time. If my partner was pregnant and her waters had broken and she needed to get to the hospital and the car's parked down below and she says, darling, get me to the hospital. And I said, no, I've got to explain to you how the engine works and about the actual design of the actual car and, and how the dashboard works. She's like, I don't care about any of that. Just get me to the hospital. I want to get to the destination quickly, safely, and without any drama. But many of you are spending all your time explaining the mechanics and forgetting about why you really got involved. So it's very clear. It's very important for you to be clear on why you really got involved with Daisy and understand it's probably going to be the same it actually is the same for everyone else. Now, your actually specific reasons will be different to everyone else. Everyone's got their own story. But everybody fundamentally 
is on a journey of trying to get from where they are in life to where they'd prefer to be. They're trying to go from the life they actually tolerate and survive to the life that they can thrive and is their best version of their life. So I want you to think about that, that when you're sharing this with other people, stop talking about the mechanics, stop talking about all the features. Talk about things that matter, where people are and where they would like to be and how you've selected this as a vehicle. It may not be the only vehicle. You know, in your garage, you might have more than one car. You might have different vehicles that can all take you to the destination. You might have an SUV. You might have a, a, a sports car. You might have a motorbike. You might have a jet ski. They're all different vehicles to get you to destinations. But in the end, they're just trying to get you to somewhere. So it's really important that you get really clear in your own mind and think about that. Why did you really get involved with Daisy? What is the end game? What are you trying to create? It's not about getting to tier 10. It's not about being a pace setter. It's not about being a pace setter leader. It's not about qualifying for builder bonus or the achiever bonus. It's none of that. They're just measuring sticks to indicate that you are on the right path. It's like your Google map on your phone. You know, you, you need to look at your starting point, your end point, and, you, and, and Google's going to tell you that you are on track to the destination and then tell you when you get off track. But you need to be clear before you can start the journey of where you're actually going. So again, get clear in your own mind about what is the end game. And, it, and the little exercise that I do that works very well is basically when you've got time, and I do it this weekend, do two things. Imagine waking up in a day of your best life. So if I was put you, I'm in a time machine and take you into the future, where that's one year, three years, five years, and you're living your best life in vivid detail, using all your senses, your sight, your hearing, your smell, your taste, your touch. What bedroom are you waking up on? What does it look like when you walk into the bathroom? What does it look like when you walk into the kitchen, to the living room? You walk outside. Is it near a lake, near the water, on the mountain, near the beach? Is it one story or two stories? What cars park in your garage? What are you doing that day? What are the activities you're going to be filling your day with? What sort of person are you going to become? Who, you know, how are people going to be perceiving you? That's the end game. And if you don't have that crystal clear in your mind, it's going to be hard to have the actual conviction to do anything to get you to the end destination. But when you've got that clearly defined, then it becomes powerful. And the next thing to do is basically document it and put a budget to it. So if you were to actually go to your accountant and you said, and he said to you, I want you to give me your budget or your costings for the last 12 months for your best life, your, your best life, what would that be? What I will tell you is that you, you probably think that you need to have millions and millions of dollars. And you don't. You don't actually. For most people, ten to thirty thousand dollars a month would more than pay for and actually sustain their best life. And at ten percent per month, which you can easily get net with Daisy, that's only a hundred k to three hundred k going to work to support an amazing lifestyle. So you don't actually need to be making millions. Okay, you might not own your dream mansion. You don't might have the super yacht and the private jet, but to be honest, not that important to live your best life. But if you add 10 to 30K coming in cash flow all the time, ongoingly, while you're building up your capital base to ultimately pay for those other assets, that would be an incredible lifestyle. The other thing you need to do is build your belief in this opportunity because when it's not about how articulate how clever how actually manipulative you are with your conversation with people people will smell your bullshit sorry to say that but they will smell your bullshit they will smell your un unauthentic language they will smell your body language 
they will pick up if you're not being true to yourself. So you need to build your belief. And that's what I'm saying. Having clarity about why you're involved, what your end game is, and that you are fully in, they will pick up on that. I don't get many objections ever. And it's not because I'm super experienced. It's because when people work with me, they know there's no hesitation in my decision-making and there's no doubt in my conviction to the opportunity. I'm either all in or not in at all. Most people are dipping their toes, maybe up to their ankles, maybe to their knees, but they're not all in. I'm head and shoulders underwater in. And when people can sense that, that you believe it, you know, I always say you need to be the thermostat, not the thermometer. A thermometer just measures the temperature of the room. In other words, you're excited when your team's excited. You're excited when the trading rewards are positive. You're excited when, when everything's heading in the, in the right direction for you. But the minute you log in and your back office doesn't show the right information or there's been a, such a drop in the trading rewards this week or something goes on or one of your downline, one of your actual team members decides not to do it anymore or even your actual referrer, a more line of introduction, one of those leaders leaves and all of a sudden your belief is gone. Just like that, just like if someone actually flipped the switch and you're gone. A thermostat is what sets the temperature. Like in your car, if you have a modern car, you set the temperature to 23 degrees, for example, and the car adjusts the airflow and the cooling to set the temperature. If you notice the way I post in the groups and everything I do, I'm constantly setting the temperature. I'm constantly the thermostat. I'm not bothered by negative reviews or other people's opinions or whether the trading's up or down or whether somebody left or came. I don't care about any of that. But most of you, most people in this opportunity are just actually thermometers. They're not thermostats. And so that's why, why would I follow a thermometer? I want to follow a thermostat. I want to know the person I'm aligned with and following is not half-hearted. Because most people don't stick around long enough to give people even a reason to succeed. You know, you might have talked to someone 30 days ago. They come back to you in a month's time and now they're ready. And you're going, oh, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm, 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 I'm on to the next gig. Or that you've already done two or three different gigs during that time. Well, why would I follow someone who's jumping all over the place? That's another whole conversation again. So be a student of your opportunity. When you put me on a Zoom with somebody, it's not that I have extensive knowledge. I'm not a trader. I'm not into trading. I'm not a blockchain expert. I know how to use crypto. But I do understand the opportunity I'm involved in. And why? Because I take the time to, to be a student of my opportunity, a student of my industry. Also, there is no substitute for experience. There simply is no substitute for experience. So, you know, people say to you, oh, it's all right for you, Michael. You've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah, well, if you'd been an engineer for 30 years, if you weren't getting paid good money, then you haven't been learning from what you've been doing. In any profession, if you spend time, you should get better. And if you're not, that's on you, okay? Build relationships and plug in. Build connection with your line of introduction. Now, I'll admit there are a lot of people who in the first 12 months when Daisy was going through, uh, as far as a roller coaster, we know it had some, some exciting times and had some challenging times. And, and I said, a lot of people were, th were thermostats, were th actually, actually thermometers, and they came and went. And they've left people to be orphans. And so it's hard to understand where do you go to because you've lost that connection. Or people just randomly joined under somebody's URL because somebody made a post. Again, another conversation. You should choose who you join with very carefully if you're serious about success. If you're not serious, then it doesn't really matter. 
but it's amazing how many people moan and groan and bitch about the how they're not getting support. And when you ask them how they chose their person, oh, I just joined with some random URL online. Well, how would you expect to succeed if you didn't even treat it serious enough? It's like just rocking up to any job and expecting to be successful without any, any relationship or due diligence. And plug in. How many people you have just rocking up now, 12 months later, 18 months later, and say, oh, I haven't done anything with this. Why isn't it any, why, why isn't this happening? Why isn't that happening? Well, you know what? If you didn't care enough about your money, if you didn't care enough about what the money you put to work, that's on you. Okay. It's on you. People should care enough about their success and their money. Get to the events. You know, if you, if you can get to Dubai in February, for example, I know it'll build your belief to a whole new level. And I know that going to events is where you build those relationships with other leaders and you get to connect with all these people and you gather their stories up because when you're sharing with other people, stories sell, facts tell. People will be more inspired by you telling the story of the single mum or the plumber or the doctor or the engineer or something that actually relates to them than whether it pays 2% on level seven or 3% or whether they're, the ROI this week is 7.8% or 15.2. People are motivated by emotional stories. They love comeback stories. They love the zero to hero stories. And events is where you can gather those stories up. I'd also say to you that adopt a mindset where you stop looking for faults, counting pennies. It's amazing how many people, you know, they put $100 in and they go, oh, I'm not rich yet. Well, what did you expect? Honestly, I mean, you know, maybe if you were planning to put $100 in every month, or maybe you're in a, you're not in a third world country where you know, $100 is a lot. Maybe you do that every 60, 90 days. But were you really expecting to be successful putting 100 USDT in? You were dipping your toe in the water. You weren't in. And don't keep looking for faults. I said, you know, people are constantly... The minute something's not displayed correctly or they can't log in, oh, no, it's a, it's a scam. It's a failure. It's, it's, it's not working anymore. I, I knew I was right. It's like they're already entering opportunity with an expectation for it to fail. And, that will, and if you've got that mindset, trust me, you will attract everybody that confirms that. I had someone when I first began this industry 33 years ago. He knew everything about the opportunity. He worked tirelessly, but he kept coming across no after no after no after no. And when I really dug down deep as to why, here's why. His belief was that it wasn't really credible, that everyone was going to say no, that it was going to fail. And he just attracted everybody to confirm that. So your belief patterns are more powerful than your words. So if you don't really believe in this opportunity, then reality is you will attract everyone to validate that. And don't question everything. You know, learn stuff along the way, but don't get too caught up in actually paralysis by analysis in this as well. So the desired outcomes of the approach are the following. To create curiosity, when you're doing the initial approach, you're not trying to present. You're not trying to convince them. You're not trying to give them the whole story. You're basically just trying to create some curiosity. You're trying to see if they're in the looking zone. What I mean by that, people are moving in and out of the looking zone. You might talk to them this week and everything is going really well. And then all of a sudden, a month later, their business that they're working for is going through some challenging times and their bosses say, we're not sure if we're going to keep you. Maybe their spouse lost their job. Maybe their kids are going to university now and they've got to come up with some extra money. Or the car's suddenly broken down and they need to actually replace the car. People are going in and out of looking zone. So if you maintain the relationship and follow up, you'll get people at the right time. So your job is just to find people who are in the looking zone, who are looking for opportunity. And you're simply looking to book a Zoom for a conversation. You're not trying to do the, the whole sales pitch on the initial approach. It's basically just to book a time for a conversation. And you want to use your line of introduction, preferably. 
If you're doing this on your own, you're doing it wrong. Basically, get the people who are in your line of support, your line of introduction involved with you to do these initial introductions. So what do you discuss in the approach? What are the key things you want to convey to people? You want to express, this is a positive way to put money to work. Hey, Dave, uh, great to catch up. Look, I got to tell you, you know, I've, lately I've been really exploring some ways to put money to work because I'm not too confident about the future of the, of the way the economy is going, you know, after COVID and, you know, cost of living is going up. And I found something that's working really, really well where I can put my money to work. I thought of you and thought maybe you'd be interested in that as well. Dave, it's really big and it's working for a lot of people. In fact, over 150,000 people around the world are taking advantage of it. What am I saying there? I'm basically saying that, they, you're, Dave, don't worry. You won't be the first person trying this out. It's already been tried, okay? And particularly now it's working exceptionally well. But Dave, you know what? It may or may not be for you but it's certainly worth your consideration. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be sharing this with you if I didn't think it was worthwhile. This is a really big thing. Don't work on the assumption that your job is to make them want to, want to get involved. It may not be for them. No matter how good this is, no matter how much the Forex is doing, it may not be for some people. And, and so basically, but I have an attitude with of that I'm going to approach everybody with that understanding that it may or may not be for them, but it's definitely worth their serious consideration. And I believe that with all sincerity. Ask them to keep an open mind. Hey, Dave, look, all I want you to do is keep an open mind. Look, I, I want to arrange a time. I've got Tuesday at three o'clock or Thursday at four o'clock, which is a good time that works for you that we can just catch up for a chat. And I'd love to share more with you. That's all. I'm just booking a time for a conversation with initial approach. And I'm asking to keep an open mind. And I've already said, hey, it may not be for you. But you know what? I only need about 15 to 20 minutes of your time. And basically, uh, at the end of that, if it's not for you, nothing lost. Key points to remember. Your exercise here is to sift and sort, not to convince. Many people say to me all the time, oh, I can't convince anybody to join. Well, that's that's part of your problem. Stop trying to convince people. It's just a sifting and sorting process. Okay. That's all we're trying to do. Sift and sort, not convince. We're looking for people in the looking zone and people move in and out of that all the time. Lose your emotional attachment to the answer given. Lose the emotional attachment to the decision they make. As soon as you don't give a damn, it's like I said, recommending a great restaurant, recommending a film that you saw, recommending... Um, I'm an activity, as far as a resort that you went to, if they don't go, you're not going to suddenly wipe them off. You're going to unfriend them on social media and you're never going to talk to them ever again. Of course you're not. So don't get so hung up on whether people get involved or not. When, you have a, when they can see that you're not emotionally attached, they're going to relax. But if they see that pent up anxiety in you and you're all worked up about the outcome they're going to pick up and they're going to smell it they're going to smell that anxiety and they can see it in your body language and your voice tone they're going to pick up that you don't sound like you normally sound but if you rang one of your friends and said hey just went and saw the uh, latest uh, tom cruise maybe the new top gun movie wow what a great movie that's cool I'm not really a fan of Tom Cruise. So, okay, no worries. Not your film. That's okay. Or I went to a fantastic Mexican restaurant and I know you like Mexican. You got to check this place out. Okay. That's all you're doing is you're just recommending something with no attachment to the outcome. But you need to make sure that you're committed before you expect them to be. That's why I said you need to get clear on why you're really involved, what the end game is, be a student of your business and make sure that you are the thermometer and not sorry, the thermostat, not thermometer. Make sure you're really committed because so many people are sort of basing their commitment on whether people join. Oh, I talked to five people and they said, no, this doesn't work. No, maybe you don't have an effective way you're actually communicating or maybe you aren't really committed. Maybe you're just trying to make, trying to find five people to validate that you were right all along that it wasn't going to work in the first place. A lot of people start opportunities like this 
with an agenda to prove that's not going to work. So they can, so they can have an excuse. Oh, I talked to 10 people. They all knocked me back. It's no good. Well, I'm sure if I talk to the same 10 people, we'd have a different, different outcome. You want to avoid working alone. This is not something you should be doing alone. If you're doing it alone, you're teaching people and showing people it's done alone. So when you're having the conversations with people, you should be trying to, I said, book them onto a Zoom or a coffee shop meeting or whatever, whatever it is, um, a video call messenger, whatever it is you use. And nothing like a video call too. And I've already talked about this in my other previous training to get the conversation flowing and see the body language, hear the voice tone, see the facial expressions. 20% of the actual communication is in your words. 80% of communication is body language, voice tone, facial expressions. Think about that. If 20% is the words, then why are you so hung up on the words that you say? You might say all the wrong things, but you're just exuding authenticity. You're exuding excitement and belief. And people are going to pick up on that. And they're going to say, gee, Michael didn't know shit about this opportunity, but he's really convinced that it's really good. And I think I should have a look at this. Seriously. But if you might know all the words that you're coming across all shaky and lack of belief, doesn't matter. So let's talk about the language of Daisy. Okay, I want to talk about what's the right language to use. I'm going to play with you a short video that uh, we will release in this coming, in this coming week. We're just getting the final draft done, but I basically want to share this. I just want to make sure I've got um, the sound right. Can I have? Um, uh, sorry, this one. I want you to listen to this video. It's about five, six minutes long. And then I'm going to go through the language used in this because this video says everything that you need to share in a very effective way. And every word that's expressed in this video was crafted in a specific way. So sit back and enjoy. To show you how to create wealth and life-changing income. There are three types of people when it comes to money and wealth creation. Those that spend more than they make, those that spend all they make, those that spend less than they make, putting the surplus to work. There are two ways to create passive cash flow, wealth, and financial independence. You have capital like cash, crypto, or other assets to put to work. Or you have insufficient capital, so you must use sweat equity. Financial independence is when you can live off your profits and not eat your capital. True wealth is when you can pay for life's luxuries with your profits while your capital grows. Imagine building capital and generating cash flow from anywhere in the world, any time of day, in any economic environment, with as little as a phone, laptop, and internet connection. You can by doing what venture capitalists do, starting with as little as $100. Did you know Netflix, Shopify, Uber, Airbnb, and many others all needed venture capital, and the venture capitalists made big profits? What if you could receive equity, rewards, and profits from funding projects with big upside with an outlay as little as $100? You can become part of the global community that enjoys the same benefits as big venture capital firms. Real world projects, real opportunity. The first venture capital raise is funding the world's biggest financial technology project, changing the world of AI trading. It's a unique opportunity offering. Receive equity in an IPO of a world leading fintech company. Enjoy passive profits from the technology developed by the fintech company. Withdraw your earnings anytime or Compound to build long-term wealth. Earn referral income by sharing the concept and building a community. AI plus fintech equals opportunity. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is used by all top financial institutions. The venture capital raise is funding development of a new super AI. The super AI is designed to create trading profits unseen before. This is one of the world's largest financial technology development projects. Crowdfunding is venture capital raising for the masses. Venture capital companies wanted to fund this project but were declined. This project is about bringing wealth to the masses, not only institutions. Contribute $100 up to $102,000, you decide your level of contribution. Contribute $102,000 and get private VIP access to the trading technology. Crowdfunding goals, phase one. Raise $10 million for development and testing of the super AI. Raise $500 million for trading fund for AI developing and testing. Profits made in the testing fund are paid out to the VC community. 
Currently, there are funds for both cryptocurrency and Forex. Future fundraisers are planned for a move into stocks and commodities. Meet Indotech, the fintech company. Indotech has a team of 60 plus AI scientists, quants, analysts, developers, and researchers. Indotech is a world leader in creating AI financial technology for institutional investment firms. White paper detailing the project was published to get input from the world's top AI and trading minds. Indotech plans to become a public company in 2023, bringing their super AI to the financial world. Meet Dr. Anna Becker, the Indotech CEO. She holds a PhD in AI and has been developing financial technology for 20 plus years. Author, speaker, consultant, and world leader in AI financial technology. Previously created and sold a successful financial technology company in the Forex sector. Her technologies are currently used by leading global banks and investment funds globally. What are the benefits of a smart contract? Smart contracts are a new technology that ensures all promised outcomes are delivered. Operate in a decentralized environment on the blockchain, free of human intervention. Provides full transparency of all transactions for your peace of mind. Instant payouts of referral earnings to your personal wallet you control. Benefits of the Tron blockchain. Tron blockchain is among the fastest and most scalable blockchains. Tron blockchain is the top emerging decentralized app platform. Tron blockchain has very low transaction fees for transferring funds. Benefits for passive crowdfund contributor. 50 to 70% of your contribution goes to the trading fund earning passive trading rewards. Indotech historically has developed an average annual profit of 200% with compounding. The goal of the super AI development is to increase current trading results up to four times. Exclusive equity shares in the IPO of Indotech planned for 2023. Benefits for referring contributors. Create a supplementary income for life-changing income from referral commissions. Receive a share of all crowdfunding contributions and all trading rewards generated globally. Receive additional equity shares in the IPO when qualified for incentive programs. Use your referral income to fund additional crowdfunding contributions, creating more income. Let's look at what has happened so far. More than 160,000 crowdfund contributors in 150 plus countries. Over 210 million USDT raised in crowdfund contributions. Over 100 million withdrawn by the community in trading and referral rewards. Five, six, and seven figure referral incomes have been earned by contributors. Imagine owning equity in real world projects that can become major success stories, earning passive profit rewards, and having priority access to lucrative opportunities, building cash flow and wealth, building a community of fellow venture capitalists. Get started today. Get back to the person who shared this opportunity with you. Okay. So Let us show on. you how to. Sorry. So give me some comments in the chat on the video. Do you like what you saw there in the video? Love to get some feedback. Um, so basically, you know, that, that video, there's a few little changes to text and voiceover, but fundamentally it's what you'll be able to use to share other people. What I want to share with you now is talk about the the actual script that that was created for that video and the language it's it's used uh it's not what i wanted to share sorry uh where are we share word document here we are okay because each of the words in here are, and and they're bolded for, ex, for to accentuate things but it's also about how you communicate days, days with other people and about the language you use. So what are we doing? We're not, send, we're not offering people a trading opportunity or trying to compete with the other trading bots out there. We're showing people how to create wealth and life-changing income. That's what we're trying to do. Remember we talked about at the start about what it, why are you really involved and why would they really get involved and about the types of people. We can talk about with people, you know, Let's, be, let's have an honest conversation. I know for me, I was somebody who sort of 
always seem to be behind the eight ball. And I recognize there are different types of people, those who always spend more than they make, those who spend everything they make. And there's some people who seem to always have surplus and they put that money to work and they get ahead in life. And I realized that that was where I needed to be. There's a conversation piece when you share people. So I can say, look, hey, Dave, I got to say, you know what? I actually had an epiphany in the last few weeks where I realized that I couldn't keep going on the way I was going. And I realized I just had to start putting some money to work. I was tired of always, you know, never having enough extra. And I, and I looked for ways to do that. And I found something that's really working and it's really big. There's only two ways to create passive wealth, cash flow, and financial independence. And that's basically you either own a lot of money or you don't have enough capital and you've just got to get busy using your sweat equity. You've got to leverage your relationships and other people's time and money. So in other words, what I'm getting at is that basically ask yourself honestly, who are you? Are you somebody who basically has a lot of money? If you do, you probably wouldn't be on this Zoom today. You'd probably be sitting, drinking your cocktails at the beach out on your yacht. I'm enjoying vacations. But you're here today because you probably don't have enough capital to put to work yet to live your best life. And financial independence is, not, is, a, is about living off your profits, not eating your capital and being able to pay for your profits, paying for your luxury, sorry, with your profits. So when you've got enough capital working for you, you can go and buy your dream car and your dream house and your dream vacations with your profit without affecting the amount of capital that you're holding on to. Like I said, to earn $10,000 a month, which is the magic number for most people, 100K at 10% is enough. $100,000. That's not a lot of money when you really think about it in terms of your lifetime income. But most people don't have more than a couple of thousand dollars if they're lucky to put to work. Imagine, I want to plant a seed. Imagine having the capital and the cash flow from anywhere in the world, creating that any time of the day in any economic environment. We know that fuel costs are going up, house prices are going up. You might say to, hey, Sue, have you noticed everything's going up in price? Petrol, living costs, uh, you know, all the costs of living, and my salary is not going up. And the actual, as far as the mortgage on the house, the borrowing rates are going up, I feel like I'm sliding behind. I had to find a way to put my money to work because I realized that my pay increase was not going to match the cost of all these things. And I found a way to put my money to work and create cash flow any time of the day in any economic environment, just with my phone and my laptop and internet connection. Wow, that sounds really exciting. What's it all about? Well, let's have a conversation. Let me share with you what I'm doing. We're doing the same thing venture capitalists are doing. I'm not talking about network marketing, MLM, or uh, trading opportunities. I'm talking about, I'm putting this on a big scale, venture capital companies, but you can start with a little bit of money. Venture capital companies are typically, typically five to a dozen investors. If you look at our Sequoia, it's the biggest venture capital company in the world based in the U S so they, you know, those sort of companies, they fund, they funded, Netflix, Shopify, Uber, Airbnb, you know, big startups that became multi-billion dollar giants. All of those opportunities needed venture capital to take their idea and create a multi-billion dollar opportunity. Well, guess what? Daisy AI is the dream of Dr. Anna. It's what she's always imagined. All that 20 years of developing AI, she said, I wonder if I could create an AI that does so much more than it's ever been done before. Not about trading, but how AI gathers information, how it can be utilized to take into account the news and social media and elections and pandemics and, and all sorts of things that affect markets. That was her dream. And what we're doing is we are like a venture capital group that are helping her fund this dream, just like the person who started Netflix did the same. You know, Netflix went to Blockbuster to be bought out because they were running out of money and they, they thought, well, we just got no choice. Would you like to buy us out? And 
Blockbuster laughed at them and sent them packing out the door. Well, guess who had the last laugh? Not long after that, Blockbuster went broke. And how many Blockbuster stores are there around the world today? None. And how many people have got a Netflix? Are paying a, a monthly Netflix fee? Hundreds of millions. So we're backing something where we can get equity. What do venture capitalists do? See, I don't want to sell this. It's just another deal of the day. Too many of you are promoting this just like, oh, this is another one of those trading deals. Oh, you know, we're getting 5% a week or 10% or 15% or 20%. So what? It's like actually going to the men's urinal and, and having a, 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 a pissing competition. That's what you're basically doing. And it's all, it just takes someone who's got a bigger ROI than you and you've lost all your credibility. You've lost all your, your, your competitive edge. But we're not about the ROI. The ROI is just a small part of this. It may be important to you because I know you want to have your money working for you, but you've got to think bigger than that. You've got to put this on a scale where people see this is not just another one of those deals of the week. And so when we talk about Netflix, you know, did you hear about Netflix, Uber, Airbnb, and how they became big? Not, not really. Well, they started out as just an idea and a, and, a, and a bunch of people who are venture capitalists put some money behind them. And what did they want in return? They wanted some shareholding. They wanted the share of their profits. They wanted the seat on the board. And guess what? Actually, Sequoia, the most successful venture capital company in the world, made more money out of venture capital than anybody else on the planet still expects that 30 to 40% of the projects they back will not generate money and they'll lose everything that they put into it. Just think about that for a minute. The most successful venture capital company with an impeccable track record is backed more multi-hundred million, multi-billion dollar venture uh, companies, uh, uh, startups, still expects that out of all their skilled team of people who've got decades of experience still expect 30 to 40 percent to fail and yet people come into opportunities like this and they sort of have a naive attitude that everything is guaranteed to work and the minute something goes wrong oh i've been ripped off i've been scammed that's another training session for the future most opportunities were not started out as a scam. That's the honest truth. There are very few opportunities that are actually scams. I'm talking about the ones that are the mainstream ones. They just didn't have the skills or the expertise or the right people to either handle the massive growth or to get them to a certain size or achieve their goals or when challenges came along and they didn't know how to handle it. And that's a reality. So have the right expectations. But what we're trying to say to people here is, look, you can get in on a venture capital deal with starting as little as $100 and get the same thing venture capitalists get with equity, rewards, and profits. And you can become a part of a global community. This is not some mum and dad created opportunity. And I'm in the basement. We're talking about a global project, the biggest crowdfunding project in the world, $250 million raised. Now think about that. If you went to our Sequoia and said, we've raised quarter of a billion dollars towards projects, they would say, shit, that's really good. Wow. That's extraordinary. How did you do that? Real world projects, real opportunity. Endotech was creating solutions for banks and institutions before Daisy was even an idea. Endotech was not created by a bunch of network marketers sitting around a coffee table, coming up with a compensation plan, looking for a product to make it look real and making money for themselves. Endotech was busy out there changing the financial world, creating extraordinary results for companies that were trading, you know, millions, tens of millions and more. Real world projects. Endotech exists before Daisy independent of Daisy and after Daisy will no longer exist perhaps. Okay. Think about that. This is not Endotech's success is not dependent upon Daisy, although we will play a significant role in their journey. So the first 
venture capital project that we as a community are funding is the development of the AI trading strategy. And it's a unique offering. And they're a world leader, a world leading fintech company. Okay. And you can, and here's what I'm trying to get across them. Hey, you know what? You can do lots of things. If you just, if you just need access to the earnings, you can withdraw any time or you can compound and create something significant. And if you share this and you build the community of venture capitalists, you can be benefit, you can benefit financially from that. Okay. So this is one of the world's largest financial technology development projects. And that's a fact. Be proud of that. We are part of one of the largest financial technology development projects, not one of the largest trading opportunities. Don't compare this to your other trading opportunities. This is not a trading opportunity. Most people have got that wrong. Crowdfunding is venture capital raising for the masses. Venture capital is big business. It's a multi-billion dollar business. Okay. And crowdfunding is just another way of doing it. And as we said, venture capital, Dr. Anna had venture capital companies lining up to give her money, but they will want a seat on her board. They will want maybe a controlling interest in the shareholding. They'll want a big share of the profits. And she said, no, this is my baby. I'm not giving up my baby and giving it off to the orphanage, off to the, off to the venture capital company for them to control it. And, and they came to an arrangement with Daisy to, hey, you, can, you, don't, you only have to give away 10% of your equity. You control your baby. It's your project. And we just share in the benefits. It's a win-win situation for everybody. Another key thing is it's about bringing wealth to the masses, not institutions. That's Dr. Anna's heart as well. She said, it wasn't just about control. I wanted to create money for the masses. I've been making money for institutions for two decades. I'm tired of that. I wanted to help the little people. And you can do that. Little as $100 or more. Or as you build up, eventually get VIP access to technology. What are we trying to do? We're not trying to create another trading bot. We're not trying to create a 10% per week ROI. We're raising money for development and testing of the AI. Just like We'd be raising money to make the Uber model a success or the Airbnb model a success or the Netflix model a success. Give me a yes in the chat if you're starting to understand the dialogue that we're supposed to be having with people. We're raising half a million dollars, half a billion dollars for the trading fund. For what? For, a, for development and testing of the AI. Development and testing. Oh, why aren't we getting the same results as they've done before? Because we're not trying to improve what we had before. We're not trying to mimic what we've done before. We're trying to create something that's never been done before. We're like Thomas Edison creating the light bulb. You don't go to Thomas Edison and say, hey, look, we're just trying to reinvent the candle. No, he's saying, I'm going to create something that's never been done before. Took him 10,000 attempts to get it right. Profits are made in that trading fund from the testing and development are shared back to the community. Okay. And they're currently involved in Forex and crypto. Actually, the Forex fund is not just trading foreign currencies. The Forex fund is trading oil and precious metals as well. That's making a lot of money for it. So there's a great team behind this. They went and got the, the, the brightest of the best AI scientists, quants, analysts, developers, and so forth. And also they created, and the thing about this, there was an arrogance here. Dr. Anna created a white paper and sent it out to universities and top research bodies and other AI development companies and said, this is what we're trying to create. Can you give us input? That shows as well that she wasn't thinking she had all the answers. She had a dream and a vision what she wanted to create, but she knew that she needed to help get other people involved. So it's a big a big weight on her shoulders to make this work when you're trying to create a, a multi-billion dollar public company. And that's what they're trying to do. And she's got a lot of credibility. I see so many comments of people, you know, knocking and criticizing. And I go, you know, you haven't achieved 0.1% of what she's achieved in her lifetime. You haven't achieved 0.1% of the credibility that she's achieved. You got to give credit where credit's due. 
you know, it's often the people who are trying to create things never been created before, like the Netflix guys who got laughed out of the office by the most successful video cassette rental company until they, Netflix, had the last laugh. Smart contracts. Don't get technical. What a smart contract. Most people wouldn't know what the hell of a smart contract is. But all it is, is it's just a way of making sure that all the promised outcomes are delivered in an environment where it's decentralized, free of human intervention, free of people manipulating the outcomes, free of people turning off the payments, free of people changing the model. And transparency, where what I'm paying for is actually what I'm getting. And also, they've chosen the best blockchain that underpins this because it's the one that allows them to achieve everything in a low transaction environment. And what are the passive benefits? The passive benefits are the equity, the, 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 the cash flow, the trading rewards, and the referral income. And so we're getting a piece of that huge IPO. And hey, look, Susan, you know what? Um, you just may want to put some money to work or you may want some supplementary income or maybe you're just tired of the life you're living and you're saying, you know what? I really, if I found something that was going to help me get to my best life, I'm in boots and all. Um, if you actually work hard at this, you can get some extra equity that's only available to special people. Hey, you're not the only joker who's involved in this. It's 160,000 people plus in 150 countries. This is not on trial. It's, it's already well tested. And basically, 100 million has already been withdrawn by the community with 210 million plus raised in contributions. So already five, six, and seven referral incomes, figure referral incomes have been made. So you're talking about credibility. You know, it's not that people, oh, this will produce that. It's already been done. Okay. So basically, we're saying imagine earning passive profit rewards. That's our messaging. Imagine having priorities to, to lucrative opportunities like the liquid mining is coming up, you know, and other things that will come in the future. Imagine building cash flow and wealth, creating a community of fellow venture capitalists. In other words, it's not just about you. When everybody starts with this, it's all about them. It is. Let's be honest. We're all selfish. We all just want to get ahead ourselves. But once you start making enough money, you want to see other people win as well. So that's what it's all about. So I hope that that gave you an indication of language and how language is very important. So in the short bit of time I've got left, I just want to cover a few things and we'll, there'll be more training sessions we're going to do. But in that initial approach where you're just trying to set up the time to have a longer conversation, they might ask, well, what is it? I, I just want to know what it is. And I'd say to people, look, not a problem. But my purpose of today's call is simply to arrange a time to talk more. I don't have a lot of time to talk. That's why I just wanted to touch base today. And I want to, I want to make sure that I fully explain it to you. And so you can ask any question you want. And, and again, this may be for you. It may not be for you. I just want to have a chat and share what's going on and see if this resonates with you. And then at the end of that, after 15, 20 minutes, you'll know. Would that be okay? When's a good time? Tuesday or Thursday? That's all I'm trying to do. I don't want to get into a conversation on the spot. The initial introduction I talked about in my last training session a few weeks back, you can look at the actual recording of that, will show you all about initial introduction. That's where you're engaging your line of introduction with you. So we're going to ask the question, is this network marketing? And I'm going to do a whole session, another session at the time about all these sort of things. But I just want to, a few quick things to think about. Don't avoid the question, but don't answer it immediately. because you don't know what they're actually asking. Okay, I want you to hear what I said. You don't actually know what they're asking or what their understanding is of network marketing, but you're already put your judge's wig on and your, you got your book of legal documents and you're going into battle to defend it. Or maybe you are had your foundation shocked because they're going to ask this terrible question. Um, just before I answer that, can you help me understand uh, what's your understanding of network marketing? Oh, 
It's one of those things where all the people at the top make all the money. Oh, well, it's nothing like that. Because I know people that, uh, that joined six months, 12 months after me, and they're making more money than I am. So it's nothing, nothing like that. So don't worry. I might also ask, do you like network marketing? Yeah, I love it. Great. You'll love this. Do you like network marketing? No. Well, then you'll love this. Because the truth is, it's all about their interpretation. They don't actually understand what this is all about right now. And I don't understand about their experience or what their understanding is or what their assumptions are. And that's a conversation that needs to be handled with care. And that's why you want to have your line of support with you on a Zoom with you. So they've got the experience and the maturity to handle these questions. You're not avoiding it. Don't avoid it. Don't try and hide or don't say, no, it's not network marketing. Or it's not this or it's not that. It is what it is. How you feel about that will impact your response. And a lack of understanding of what they know will, will affect how you communicate them. So don't be too quick to jump in and answer the question because you need to peel the onion and really understand what are they actually asking. But again, I'm going to do a whole session on that. That's another conversation. What I want to finish off on is resources. There are some great resources you can use to really gain more information, to gain that belief and learn more. Many of you have seen that I created the Trading Rewards Calculator. That's a great tool to, to help people get crystal clear on what the outcomes are. And when you're talking about their goals and they start to put a budget to it, and when I have that conversation about imagine waking up in your best life in a couple of years' time and then basically saying to them, hey, you know, um, basically, okay, what's that going to cost to support that? 10K a month. Okay, let's get our calculator out and let's have a look at what will happen. Okay. So our Crowd Tycoons YouTube channel, go to YouTube, type in Crowd Tycoons and basically have a look at that. And you'll see there's a whole series of um, all these playlists and lots of videos there on every topic you can possibly conceive from social media marketing, approaching your market, how to actually structure your team, how to set up a wallet, everything that you need. Our crowd, our crowd Tycoons Facebook group is available to everybody involved with Daisy. Feel free to be part of that. We post all our information in there. And again, there's, there's no links to anybody's accounts. I am very diligent. None of my videos have any links to me. None of our groups have any links and not allowed to. And if anybody tries to pitch or poach or anything like that, they're out of that group so quick, they won't know what hit them. Okay. Our, I also created a network marketing craftsmanship group. That's all about education, training, and mentoring. It's simply teaching you the skills of how to be a successful builder of your own personal community. No opportunities mentioned, not allowed, not allowed to prospect or anything in there. And again, if you do that, you won't last more than a few seconds in there. So it's a safe place for you to gain your craftsmanship. On that note, uh, I'm going to in, uh, end this session today. I hope you got some, some great things out of this, and I look forward to seeing you on the next session. Um, it's not a Q&A session, because so I try to keep these to the hour. But basically today, I wanted to get information. Uh, you can certainly give me some feedback in the, in, in the chat. I'd love to, you know, on a scale of one to 100, how did you like today's session? Did you get value out of it? Did you feel like you had some epiphanies? Did you feel like you now feel more confident about what to do? Is now not so scary? Do you have some takeaways? 99, room for improvement, great. Well, folks, I really appreciate taking time out of your Saturday. Have a fantastic weekend. We've got an exciting month of October ahead. The next 90 days can well end your 2022 on a high note and set you up for 2023 in a way that you never imagined it can be your best year ever. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I'll put the recording up on our, on our YouTube channel. Just search for Crowd Tycoons and uh, have a fantastic day what's left of it and weekend and i'll talk to you again soon take care thanks everyone take care